What's going on, friends and family? My name is Skylint, and you know, here at Skylint Games, we like to show off weird, wacky games. Okay, and today's list is gonna be a little bit extra peculiar. I haven't really seen many of these on YouTube, so today we're gonna do my list, my picks, for my top 10 best asymmetrical multiplayer games. These are titles that focus on unbalanced gameplay in a sense. They are competitive games. Think something like Hide and Seek, where one team or one player plays an entirely different way compared to the rest of the game. Very interesting stuff here and a lot of these games play so radically different from each other and we're not including asynchronous games i made sure all of these games have playable populations this genre is up and coming very niche and weird so a lot of these games tragically couldn't make the list because they're dying or have died they're dead which is kind of a tragedy but it's up and coming some of these games are actually getting really popular some of them are super trendy so hopefully you guys can jump on that train ride the wave now together let's have some fun all right, guys, number 10. I love slapping this game every chance I get into a top 10. If it was my pixel art list, if it was my party game list, what have you, dudes, I'm talking about Crawl. This is a party game, competitive, couch co op -y, dungeon diver thing. It's super strange. So it's asymmetrical multiplayer because it's three players who happen to be necromancers that are spirits that possess traps, monsters, and potentially the hero character. So yeah, one player starts as the hero, but then you kind of rotate through the body as you try to kill the hero so that you can possess the body. And then you travel through the dungeon, you acquire loot, you gain monsters that you can level up and evolve and whatever. You go all the way to the end of the boss and then you even got to fight the boss, which the other players actually control the different limbs and things for. It gets crazy ridiculous. And then whoever actually escapes the dungeon by possessing the hero, the body, and then leaving is the winner. And it sounds super unbalanced and chaotic. It's chaos and it's fun, but it's actually more balanced than you would think. Absolutely. One of my favorite. And if you look at other critics' videos of this game, you'll see the glowing praise of it as well. For all, one of the best party games of all time. And for asymmetrical multiplayer games, I had to use it to start off my list. Next up, Snipers vs. Thieves at number 9. Now this is a mobile game as well, it's a shooter. It's a first person shooter, but don't let that scare you, I promise you. It actually works near flawlessly. There's lots of really cool gadgets and upgrades and it's really more of a strategy game and it uses placing style aim. Thieves do run in predictable patterns. Thieves do have certain paths that they can run through and it's kind of like Tower of Power if you've ever played those mini games in like Halo or maybe Gmod or some custom game maker. But yeah, one sniper in a tower is shooting thieves as they run through the lanes. And the thieves can actually work together. You can play with your friends and you have all these crazy gadgets, like you can actually throw rockets at them or you can have inflatables or you can have like little uh, bushes that you can kind of hide or use as a defense. A lot of weird, wacky stuff in this game, even for the sniper as well. You can have like, you know, airdrops and things too. So it's a really fun game that even as a first person shooter on mobile devices, I would honestly put it as my top 10 FPSs of all time, including all consoles, PC genres. But as an asymmetrical multiplayer game, it's real time PVP sniper versus Thieves, absolutely, it's gonna be making the list. Righteous though, number eight, we have a game called Death. This is Sharks versus Divers. Now I really like this game because it's campaign oriented, as in you move through a level as divers, you go from like a little ruin area to ruin area or you know, like some shipwreck or like, I don't know, stuff, you, things, you're, you're diving for treasure, okay? You're going from place to place and then there's freaking evolving sharks that try to kill you and yes, they do evolve, but also as divers throughout the match, kind of like Counter-Strike, you do also accrue customization, weapons, you, you actually find treasure, you get the currency, and then you try to upgrade so that you can survive to the end of the match. Now, there are limited lives uh, to these sharks as well as the divers, you gotta look out for that. Uh, and it really reminds me of something like Far Cry Predator. I hope you guys got to play that back in the day. But dude, it's so intense. You actually get like this crazy heartbeat sound effect when sharks are nearby. And yeah, with the sharks and their evolutions, how fast they can be. And there are different sharks you can actually play as. There's a lot of interesting ways to play, especially because it's big open maps under the sea, but it's also campaign oriented. So lots of different situations you're gonna find yourself in that's gonna have your heart racing. Now, my number seven is gonna be a really cute, just quick, clean game called Who's Your Daddy? Now, this is a very cheap game, so I'm gonna suggest that you do buy two copies so you and a friend can play over internet connection. Now, it is online, but the population is really low. Still, 1v1, it makes the list. Who's Your Daddy is a game about a dad trying to baby-proof a house so that a child, who is another player, doesn't kill themselves. Yeah, you can eat batteries, stuff yourself in a stove, I don't know, break glass, all sorts of really creative things that you could do to commit suicide as a baby. Of course, you're crawling 
crawling around. You're gonna try to hide and ninja your way to uh, hell, but the dad's gonna try to do his damnedest to make sure that doesn't happen. Now, there's lots of different ways you can kill yourself. There's lots of different things as a dad. You gotta be focused on where the baby is, what he's doing, what he maybe might be planning, uh, because it is a kind of a health system. You, you're not just gonna go find some batteries, eat it, and then instantly die. It is actually like an evolving, engaging process, I think. Now, maybe I'm kind of overselling it a bit for what it is. It's a simple, charming game, but yeah, cheap enough. Pick it up for you and a friend. You're gonna have a blast. Alright guys, next up on our list, I have a free-to-play game that actually plays in shortish rounds, so pretty good if you want to just jump in with your Discord, your community, your friends and family. Oh, links in the description, by the way, if you want to join us. But anyways, yeah, just jump in, you know, pal around a little bit, except one of you is a traitor. Yeah, Deceit is a game about running through a short little tiny mini campaign, kind of sawish actually, with the little puzzles you gotta solve, and it's almost kind of like game showish in some ways. One of you guys is actually a traitor. You're actually a freaking monster. I'm not really sure what the world setting is here, but one of you guys is a freaking monster and then when the lights go out during certain phases of the game yeah well you turn into a monster and you start wrecking people the normal people can shoot you but the game is really about trying to figure out who the monster is before it happens uh, so that you can kill them before the lights go out and then you get your face aided off so if you like that whole kind of like spy sort of espionage-esque type of gameplay i think deceit is the new game to look at well, moving through the list halfway now, we have an IO game. And there's lots of free-for-all IO games. There's lots of weird creative IO games. I got multiple lists on those. If you guys click the description, you're gonna find some. But I'm gonna put deep.io specifically for asymmetrical multiplayer games. And I feel like I gotta kind of explain myself here now. I debated putting it on the list, but because you do jump into the game that's always constantly being played, you do join with an imbalance. And you normally do in IO games, but deep more than any other IO game I've played has this weird freaking ecosystem. It's like Agar times 20 because you have all these different creatures you evolve into and these different creatures eat other different creatures and have other different resources and do other different things. And it's literally like, I know it looks like fishes and there's like a whole ecosystem on the screen. Literally, that's what you're seeing. You know, like gulls are gonna be eating crabs or I think crabs can actually uh, do a lot of weird stuff on land and then gulls can dive, but they can't go too deep. So then the squids are, you know, the kings of the deep sea, but then you have like all these other creatures that do other things. There's even like freaking like leeches where you can leech onto other players and I don't know, a lot of weird stuff and it's extremely asymmetrical, but it's kind of like tenfold. So it's like one team versus another team versus another team versus another team that you constantly evolve through and go through the food chain. It's, it's just weird. And the fact that there is a food chain in Deep.io is why it makes the list. Yeah, but now we're into the big bad four. Now here is an early access game that I fell in love with instantaneously, and it's a game called Witchet. Basically, it's Prop Hunt. And I know a lot of you guys have played that. You've probably played the mini game stuffs on the Minecraft servers as well. Lots of other games with custom game makers, whatever, have stuff like this. But this is a standalone game that looks really freaking polished. I love low poly 3D art. It's gorgeous and it runs fantastic. But it also has some really interesting mechanics and physics with the witches and how they can fly and kind of bob around. You got freaking grappling hooks as the hunters. But yeah, basically it's hunters versus witches. The maps are really big. There's very involving with the different props that you can actually transform into. And then of course, as the witches, you do have magic and you have a little bit customization when you go into a match as a hunter, you can choose, you know, different ways of alerting where a witch is. Of course, you, uh, like I said, grappling hooks or a, a myriad of things you could choose from. In the witches, you have different magic as well so a lot of different customization really good maps that I really like and it's still just kind of like a quick clean game that even in early access I have to slap it on here for asymmetrical multiplayer games next number three I'm gonna put dead by daylight now I think some of you guys were expecting this to actually be number one uh, it's good. It's cool stuff. I understand. One of the most fun stuff to watch on Twitch, YouTube, what have you. I really like the personalities that have come out from this game, and I kind of like the copycats that have been trying to come out for this title as well. Some people might reference it like it's similar to Evolve in some ways. Now, it's, it's really its own special thing. 
Basically, there's a killer or a monster, and there's actually a myriad of those that you can choose from, and then you have survivors. And I really like that there's this sort of like alternate objective sort of way to play the game. There's a couple of different ways that you can go about actually hunting or hiding, and I just really appreciate that. So you don't run through a campaign of a level, it's more like an arena, but still you're gonna be crisscrossing paths, running all over the place, and really tr it's truly hide and seek, but then you also have these like little objectives that you have to pursue in order to really uh, win in survival survive or to hunt uh, your prey. So in the end, I like this game and I'm choosing this one over the clones and over the other more buggier games. Uh, I just want to really highlight this one as the number one. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now we're at number two and I'm going to put Rainbow Six Siege. So I also was wondering if I should actually put this on the list, but it looks like a lot of other publications are very open and public about the asymmetry of this title. I know you take turns, but I think this also fits in the list. Now, maybe something like Overwatch you could debate is also on there, but Rainbow Six Siege takes it a step further, where it is a hero shooter in a sense, it's also a tactical game, but it's attack defense, specifically and only. That is how you play the game. There is no other options, it is just asymmetry, because the attacking team and the defending team actually have unique heroes in between them even. So some might have similar play styles, you might use similar guns, maybe even identical guns, but the overall play style of attack and defense are completely and wholly different. Now you do take turns and that's how it's fair and competitive. This is one of the fastest growing games actually. Really want to applaud uh, Ubisoft for actually pursuing this game and giving us an amazing tactical shooter with a lot of weird gimmicks. It's an asymmetrical tactical hero shooter. It's a really weird title. Didn't expect it to blow up, but it actually did. It's actually fantastic now, runs great, and I'm having a lot of fun. Um, we're, we're still learning the game. Actually, it's probably one of those games that has like the highest skill ceiling and learning curve. That's okay. It's okay to suck. At least that's what I'm telling myself. And hopefully you tell yourself that too. Jump into Rainbow Six Siege, party up with me, links in the description for Discord, and uh, maybe we can make some magic happen. But now, before I get to our number one, as I said earlier, a lot of games didn't make the list because of population issues, and I care about the experience you guys have. I don't want you to waste money and time, and so I have an honorable section here, honorable mentions of games that I enjoyed, I thought were interesting, but they're just too niche now, and they fell away. So, first game I want to talk about is Evolve Stage 2. Turtle Rock, the makers of Left 4 Dead actually created this game. It had some big, awful publishing issues. It's really a tragedy. It's still free to play. You still might be able to find some matches. I really hope you can at least play this game one time as a human and one time as a monster. It's a very interesting game. I hope one day they allow us to make custom servers and allow us to LAN it, because then I think it could live on. But here, it can, I think it can really only exist as an honorable mention. Next up, we have Natural Selection 2. This was a game that just had such a ridiculous learning curve, and I mean like insane. It is insanely complicated. Monsters versus humans, except it's like an RTS at the same time, so you're building a lot of stuff, getting resources, but you're still fighting like it's an FPS in like these really closing corridors, but it, it's so fast paced. Really interesting game, really weird. One of the most unique games of all time. I'd probably put it in my top 10 most unique games and higher up on the list but nobody plays it, and you need teams, large teams, to really fully feel this game. And then the last one is a game called Savage Resurrection, which is another a mix of strategy and FPS. It kind of felt like Unreal mixed with a strategy game, so it's an action RTS. And we do see some of these actually becoming popular when it comes to like the MMO space or when it comes to like medieval melee fantasy, like with the upcoming Conqueror's Blade. I'll do videos on that. But Savage Resurrection just really didn't hit any special sweet spots, it seems, for anybody, any community. And so again, zero population, can't recommend it. So now with those out of the way, and you know my reasoning of why I picked the games on this list, I gotta put as my number one, actually kind of like the grandfather of all asymmetrical multiplayer games, at least the modern era of such, and that's gonna be Left 4 Dead 2. So I'm doing number two because that's the newest one. It has like the most mods, the most community as well. It actually includes the whole campaign of Left 4 Dead 1. So yeah, basically just get Left 4 Dead 2. That's all you really need. But even though this game is an oldie, it's still a goodie. This one still has a lot of people playing it, and it's the one that inspired so many other games. Like I gave an honorable mention for Evolve, Turtle Rock's first game, they worked on Left 4 Dead. 
And Valve helped them out, they published it, and it became such a huge thing, and it inspired so many other games. I know that Psyonix's Nosgoth directly took up from a lot of the mechanics of Left 4 Dead, though that was also a game that maybe I could have honorably mentioned. Anyways, Left 4 Dead 2, no, still going strong, still kicking, and still inspiring more games, such as Vermintide and Vermintide 2, which is up and coming, uh, they were just released. But Left 4 Dead 2, hopefully I don't need to explain too much of what it is, but basically it's a zombie game, really fast, crazy zombies, lots of mutated zombies, and when you play the PvP, it's humans running through a campaign, so like depth, yep, this game inspired depth, and you're running through levels, you're doing objectives, and yeah, you're being invaded by freaking boomers and smokers and spitters and all sorts of ridiculous zombies that the players actually control and have their own unique mechanics with that. And you're trying to run around, scrounge around for, you know, set up interesting traps as the humans, uh, you know, maybe like some explosion barrels somewhere, uh, you know, getting lots of different guns, a lot of ridiculous, silly fun to be had here that people are still playing and still having fun even to this day. And that's not even talking about the modding scene, really. But lastly, I do want to say, asymmetric or not, even if you want to play just the co-op or even just play single player, Left 4 Dead 2 is still a pretty freaking fantastic game, well-rounded all around. Yeah, guys, that's going to be the end of my top 10 list. Asymmetric multiplayer games. A weird list, I know, but that's what you Patreon for. That's what you donate for. That's what you thumbs up for. That's what you leave your comments saying. Thank you, Daddy Sky. I don't know why you guys say Daddy, but whatever. Anyways, thanks so much, guys, for the love and support. And I just want to ask any other top 10 ideas you have. I play a lot of weird freaking games. I don't just want to do MMO top 10s. Come on, guys. Give it to me hard in the comments below. Let me know. But either way, I hope you guys keep that hype alive. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you had fun. My name's Skylint, and I'll see you in the next one.